Hey, what's going on everybody? Good to see you again. Jersey Josh coming back at you with another electric tips video. I know it's been a while since I've made a video, a regular video on the Black Bomber bike. Uh, sorry about that. I've just had, you know, so much going on lately. So I uh, riding the, the, the Alta and the, the KTM quite a bit lately. Um, haven't had as much time to get out on this. My son ends up riding this bike a lot. Um, so he's been having a blast on it. And you know, I was there, they went to Florida like for two weeks, the family, and I was by myself, and it was like, it's a weird week. I was looking at this, you know, I was like, you know, I'm gonna take a ride out on this. Um, Cause normally a lot of the places I ride the big bikes, you can't you can't take this, cause it's just a little much for this, in the deep sand, and the, you know, and the, and the, you really need a full suspension setup for a lot of those like big places I ride. Uh, but there's one great spot near us, um, you know, all mountain bike trails, and it's just, perfect for this guy and it's been a while since I've ridden that so I said you know what let's let's go take this out so I took it out man it just reminded me of just the ease of what riding this bike is and the experience of the hub motorbikes versus like a gas bike or even my Alta as an electric mid-drive which is um, you know the Alta's <laughs> It's an amazing bike, and but it is loud to a degree, even though it's electric, it's still loud. A lot of chain noise, motor noise, as opposed to this. As opposed to a gas bike, Alt is still quiet, believe me. Especially my KTM, my KTM is as loud as it gets. Uh, but this bike, this black bike, is just super quiet. It makes literally zero noise. I've ridden up to people in the woods, got within five feet of them. They had no idea I was behind them. And I'm literally not exaggerating. That's how quiet this thing is. Um, so getting back at it on it the other night and then riding, it was just like, wow, like I, I forgot what it's like to ride in total silence. Um, so I took it out in those trails, had a blast, had a super fun ride. I was like, oh, I kind of rekindled, you know, my love for this guy back again got home and as I was pulling up in my driveway, I hear a psh, and I'm like, no way. The valve stem ripped right underneath of it and it tore and all the air went out immediately. Um, and the funny thing was, the next morning I went out and took the 350 for a ride, hitting some fast whoops. I got a rear flat tire on that thing too. So two flats in a weekend, super rare. It sucks, but you know, whatever happens, you gotta deal with it like everything else. So. Uh, I took the wheel off of this guy, right? And as you know, most of you guys who have these Chinese bikes from Alibaba or even a lot of places in US sell them now, but these clone bikes with this frame, a lot of them come with this moto tire. It's, the, it's a 80-100 it's a 21 inch tire. Um, it's actually heavy. Let's, let's weigh it, see how much this thing weighs. It's actually heavier, heavier than I thought it was gonna be. So if I weigh this tire, it is 8.6 pounds, which is substantial. As far as moto tires go, it's definitely lighter. Let's face it, this is a, ch this is a cheaper end tire. It's a Chinese Zhuan Zig, it's called. Y-U-A-N-X-I-N-G. I tried to look them up online, couldn't really find it anywhere. I don't know, they're just probably getting these out of some kind of factory over in China somewhere at a huge discount. Not a terrible tire, actually, that's the funny thing. I don't, I didn't mind this tire. I've actually had a lot of good experience with this tire. Um, it's probably because of the bike it's on. It's not like a, it's heavy as a dirt bike or as big as a dirt bike. If I was gonna put this tire on my dirt bikes, I would probably have a problem with it, but on this bike, I had no problems with it. It treated me very well. But I figured I had an extra, Bridgestone M59 80-121 tire I was gonna put on. Uh, or I mean, I had laying around from one of my bikes when I took this off. Still had a lot of life into it. So I figured, you know what, let me, let's run this tire instead. I'll show you a close up, but when you have these side by side, the M59 tire is definitely taller. It, it's, it's got a thicker sidewall, taller. Um, so it's gonna add about probably, I'd say a half, three quarters of an inch height to the front, which actually I'm kind of excited about because if it raises that front up a little higher, I'm, I'm all for that because the you know these bikes are smaller um, and it definitely is a little wider. Um, tires are usually tad narrower when they're off the rim, but 
I'll show you a close up where you can see it is a little bit narrower than the Bridgestone M59. The Bridgestone M59 tire is a very popular tire in the dirt bike world, especially it's a good all around tire, especially for like, if you have to go into some rock sections too, it's a decent tire for that, which I don't do a lot in Jersey. It's mostly all sand and, and, and slightly firmer track around here. So for those of you who have one of these bomber bikes with like a 21 inch wheel, even a 19 inch wheel, uh, you'll know that they're not on a motorcycle type hub. They're on a different type of hub. They're on a, they're on a mountain bike hub. Uh, this is like a 20 millimeter spindle. Uh, actually, this is a 20 millimeter axle hole. Fox 40 forks take, they use a spindle like this, which is a 20 millimeter. Uh, it's got a couple threads at the top and a piece. Basically it just slides in and then screws in right here. It's super easy to use. Um, I like it, it's actually a great design, so it just slides through, screws in, and then you have two sets of pinch bolts here. When you put this back together and put it on, it's uh, very important that you put this back on the proper way. Oh my God, the spindle just rolled off, oh well. <laughs> so when you put this back on, it's important that you put this on the right way. I like to tighten down the bolts on the left. Well, specifically for a dirt bike, this is done, this is how you do it on a dirt bike. On a mountain bike downhill fork, it's not so as important because you got this center uh, crown piece here keeping the forks where they're supposed to be. So you're not gonna have movement. Like on a dirt bike, these things move and go all over the place and it's a lot more tricky. Um, but I still like to just do these first, bounce a few times, make sure it's seated inside the axle properly. Everything's spinning, moving slow, like smoothly, so there's no binding anywhere on the fork. So before I mount this up, I'm actually going to put the old proctologist gloves back on. And I wanna put a little white lithium grease on this just to make sure it's, um, it's got enough a little lubrication in the middle there where it's spinning on. I don't know that you have to do this on these bikes. Um, as with dirt bikes, you have to grease everything. Mount bike, my knowledge isn't quite what it is with dirt bikes. So I, I, I can't imagine grease. Wouldn't hurt to have some grease on it. All right, so when you mount your wheel back up, remember you got your brake disc on the one side, obviously. And this tire's thicker, so it's a little bit of a squeeze getting it in there. So another little tip, when you have your wheel off, it is super important to never, ever, ever pull in the lever on your brake because these are hydraulic brakes. If you have hydraulic brakes, that is. So with hydraulic brakes, if you pull in that lever, it's gonna compress that piston in and then it's gonna create air in the line piston because there's nothing gonna be putting resistance on that pad and there's no disc there to stop it. So if you do that, you're probably gonna have problems. You're probably gonna have to rebreed your brake line, which is a massive pain in the butt. You don't wanna have to do that. So sometimes people even put uh, like a zip tie on there just to remember uh, to not do that. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna slide this wheel back in between the pads. Sometimes this can be tricky and tough. It has to kind of roll up. All right. Now when you get it in there, just take your spindle. You don't wanna have to pound it with a hammer. If you have to. Usually you have to pound something with a hammer. It means something's wrong. But you do have to hit it in a little bit until you see it go right up to the threads, right? You wanna grab your wrench, torque wrench, Allen key, whatever it is, and you're gonna screw it back in. These don't take a ton of pressure. Don't over torque this, it's very important. Just make sure you go to the end. As soon as you feel it start to stop, that's enough. Make sure it free spins. So one other thing I forgot to mention, I put a rim lock on this. That's, these tires do not come with a rim lock. And I'm suspecting that may be why I got the flat tire. Um, what a rim lock does if you're not familiar with this, it's, it's, a, it's a piece that goes between the tire itself and the rim. And it's got a, a, a piece that goes through the rim 
and you screw down so it tightens. So there's like two pieces that clamp down on the tire. What happens is when you put the rim lock on, it does not allow this tire to spin on the rim. So if you were to like hit the brakes really hard, these bikes are heavy. It puts a lot of pressure on this tire and that tire can push and the tube inside correspondingly will turn and shift. Now, if it does that, your valve stem that's coming through this little tiny hole here will get pushed. And I'm suspecting that maybe what happened, why this got the flat, it sheared that valve stem off on too hard of a brake. It didn't happen for many, many rides of doing this. So, but sometimes all it takes is one. And it, that one time is all it takes. Now, here's the other thing with putting a rim lock on a tire. It adds extra weight on a certain spot of the tire. This tire right here, so if I let this go, I bet you it's gonna drop and stop right at the bottom. Yup, sure it is, coming down. So now this tire is unbalanced. So if it's not balanced, what happens is when you're riding on the road, you're gonna feel a bounce when you get it to higher speeds, especially on the pavement, um, if a tire is unbalanced, because it's got a heavy spot and it's gonna, it's gonna bounce like this. I have all my wheels and my dirt bikes balanced. It makes a huge difference when I, when I hit road sections. Um, so now that I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna take this back off and see if I can balance it with enough weights. So just so you guys know, these are what balancing weights look like. They can either come in little stick on metal weights like this that you would stick on your rim, or they would be uh, things like this with a little Allen key right here that you would stick on your rim, tighten, so it, it creates a counterweight on the opposite side of where all the heavier weight is. So I have a wheel balance truing stand that normally I would put my, my wheels on and use that. It creates a perfectly level, free spinning surface to balance it on. This wheel spins so nice and smooth on this spindle that I really didn't have to even take the tire off to do that. Um, I used all the weights I had, as you can see here, and it really still wasn't, I, which I'm really shocked at how heavy this side is, but right now, like if I let it go, it still moves and drops a little bit down towards where the rim lock is and the valve stem. Not as much as it did. Now before if I let it go, it went and like fast, it stuck right to the bottom. Now it's at least hanging right here side to side. So it's definitely more balanced now than it was. Um, it would bet it'll bounce less on the road now than it would have if I didn't put these, these weights right here on the spoke. So I'm just gonna leave these on and um, I, you know, I'll take it for a ride, see how bad it, if it's really bad, I'll just order new more of these and, and do it properly. Uh, but hopefully it shouldn't be that bad because it's, it's, it's close, it's not that far off. See if I let it go, it still spins, which it's not supposed to do, but you know, it's, it's not terrible. So we'll see how it goes. My son just brought me a uh, drink from Chick-fil-A, Diet Dr. Pepper, he works there now. So free drinks if your kid works there. So on some of my other videos, when I was adjusting the brake disc, because there was some rubbing, I got so many stinking comments of people like, oh, what are you doing that for? All I gotta do is squeeze in the handle, hold it, and then tighten up your bolts and it'll be properly adjusted. No, it will not always work like that, and I'm so tired of responding to those comments. These are floating disc brakes, so it's a little different. And as I just showed you, right, I, for just for demonstration purposes, I held in the brake handle, tighten up my pinch bolts, all right? Now listen to this. You hear that? It didn't work, guys. It doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to be a little more specific with how you adjust these brakes. Um, and it takes a little finagling, a little fine tuning. Just because, you know, that, that may work for certain brakes, but it's not working for the Shimano Z floating disc brakes. Right, so it takes, it's gonna take a little more fine tuning, as they say. So you gotta find which direction it's rubbing and it's very careful not to let your fingers hit, get in between the disc and the spokes when you're spinning the wheel, because I've made that mistake multiple times. It's also important you have a straight brake disc because if there's even a slightest bend in that thing, it's gonna drive you nuts and you won't be able to get all that noise out of it. So that's a pretty important fact. And when you tighten these bolts back down, 
Make sure you do it very slowly because if you put a little, even the slightest little force can knock it out a quarter millimeter. Here it's perfect. It's perfect now. So when I looked very closely, what I noticed is when you do that last little quarter turn of the, of the Allen key, it was ever so slightly pulling the wheel over. Ever so slightly. But now it's good. No noise. Awesome. So I don't know if you guys remember how thick the knobs were on this back tire, but it is pretty worn down and worn out. And it is time for a new rear tire. I'm actually kind of dreading changing that out, but it is time to just go take a quick spin on this thing, see how she feels. And uh, hopefully it'll be all good. Now, just a quick, quick reminder, times like this when you're actually working on your bike, it's a good idea to do a once over, check all the bolts, make sure that everything from back to front is all tight and good to go because you don't want something falling off in the middle of the trail and you don't want to you know have some kind of accident like that that could be disastrous or you could be stuck out there especially if you don't bring tools with you you could be stuck out there in a, in a rough situation with a long way to go to get home and their bike stuck in the woods or stuck on the street or wherever you may leave it um so yeah hopefully that that helps you guys out gave you some tips about you know, wheel changing and wheel sizes and you know how to do things. I'm gonna have to change this back tire soon. And I'm like I said, I'm dreading that. I wanna have to get on that. But uh, you know, once I do, it'll just, it'll be worth it. So uh, I wanna go uh, take a spin and I will catch you guys next time. Have a great ride. <laughs>